to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want to read one verse. If you're hearing tonight to open my message tonight. The word of the Lord in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days pearls times shall come. I want to read that again. This know also that in the last day perilous times shall come. By the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach to you understanding the times. Understanding the times. Praise the Lord. If you'll put your Bibles down, I want you to carry the word of the Lord and stretch your hands towards heaven. I want you to ask the Lord to move in this house tonight. I want you to ask Him to have His way, that His will would be done. Lord, we love You, Jesus. Lord, I thank You, Lord, for this opportunity to be in Your presence tonight. Lord, I thank You, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to bring forth Your Word, God. But, Lord, in doing so, I ask, God, that Your will would be, your will would be done. Lord, not by will, but Your will be done, God, that You would move in this house, that You give us understanding to Your Word, God. Lord, that you open every ear and every heart to the hearing of your word, God. But I ask, God, that you move in this house tonight, God, that we've never seen before. Lord, that you move in a way, God, we've never felt before. In your sweet, precious name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In your name, put your hands together as you're being seated in the fear of the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise the Lord. In 1859, one of the most popular or perhaps the greatest English novels of all Charles Dickens wrote a, histor a historical romance, The Tale of Two Cities. If ever a statement from secular writing respects in the day in which we are living in now, the opening lines of that novel does it well. It was the worst times. And yet it was the best times. And I believe that's what we're living in now. We're living in some of the best times as well as some of the worst times that we can live in. Our scripture text says this though also that the last days, perilous times shall come. We are living this day in perilous times, dangerous times, hazardous times, risky, risky times. There is a spirit of anarchy and lawlessness that is both seen and felt in this world we are living in. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 says, But evil men uh, and seducers shall wax worse and worse, uh, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, uh, Hebrews, uh, if you'll pull it up, Hebrews chapter 12 verses 27 and 28. Uh, and this word, and this, and this word uh, yet once more signifies uh, the removing of those things uh, that are shaken up uh, as of things that are made, uh, that those things have hitched, cannot, cannot uh, be shaken, remain. Uh, wherefore we are receiving a kingdom of uh, his cannot be moved. Let us have grace uh, whereby we may serve God acceptably uh, and reverence uh, by a by a godly fear of uh, everything that can that can be shaken up uh, economically system from politically system the education education system uh, the defense system uh, but I thank God we are not that we are of a kingdom that cannot be shaken uh, can I say that again we are living in a world that is shaken by everything uh, our education our schools are being shaken up uh, and being motivated by whatever the world wants them to be motivated by uh, they are teaching our kids that they have no things that they have no be business teaching our kids. Uh, they are teaching our kids that are things that are not even uh, that don't even pertain uh, to, to the knowledge of school. They don't they're teaching them things that don't pertain to math or English or literature. They're teaching them things that are of this world that doesn't make a difference. Uh, they're teaching our children how to live in the world and how to be a part of the world. Uh, and teaching teaching our children how to fit in the world. These are the times that we are living in. Uh, but can I tell you that there we are so living in a time uh, that there is a church that is taking a stand. Uh, that we're living in a time that there 
the media made all the all of my scriptures for it out with them. But Second Peter chapter chapter one and verse eleven for so and an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly and to everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. The trend is to blend in and try to fit in. There is a lack of morals in our society. What is wrong with living right? But can I tell you, it is late. It has never been this late before. There was a little girl that once heard a clock chime. Times uh, and frightened, she ran to her mother and said, It's never been this late before. Uh, but Romans chapter 13 and verses uh, 11 and 12 tells us, uh, tells us in that knowing uh, the time that now is high time uh, to awake out of our sleep, uh, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Uh, verse 12 the night, uh, the night is far spent, uh, the day is at hand. Uh, let us cast off the works of darkness uh, and let us put on the armor of light. Uh, can I tell you that now it's time to wake up. Uh, it's time for the church if it's been asleep to ever wake up now. Uh, for the rain it's time for us uh, to preach harder than we've ever preached before. And I'm going to tell you I believe we got some of the hardest preaching uh, some of the greatest preaching uh, in Rock Hill. Uh, we got some of the most outstanding preaching. Uh, we hear truth. Uh, we hear it like we need to hear it. Uh, it's time Word of 
come. I know it's been happening. And it's been happening way before I was born. More people have been taking the word of God and cutting out what don't, belong to them, what don't fit their lifestyle. Right. But can I tell you, oh, it's been happening for generations and generations. Brother Brennan, it's getting worse. And it's getting worse every day that we wake up. That people no longer want all of the word of God. But they only want what applies to their life. They only want what to want them. That's not going to keep them from blending in. Because they want to blend in. They want to fit in with the crowd. And that's what they want. So they're going to take and they're going to cut out the word of God. But it doesn't fit their lifestyle. But can I tell you, my God, we can't go along. We got people that are sitting at the gate of the world right now wanting to make it to heaven. But friend, can I tell you, but the power and authority of the Holy Ghost don't ever make it. Because you can't make it to heaven with a lukewarm spirit. I'm Come on. 
Wow. He said, because if you're going to be lukewarm, I'm not going to have nothing to do with you. I don't want no part of you. I'm going to spit you away. I'm going to do away with you. I'm not even going to recognize you. Everybody, hey, I got any coffee drinkers in the house? Yeah. How many of you fix you a cup of coffee? Four. Yeah. And you sit it down on the table and you... And you went and done something and you forgot about that coffee and you went back to that coffee and you went and took you a big old sip. And it was lukewarm and you... Oh, it was nasty. And you spit it back out. And you fixed you a hot cup. Because you want hot coffee. You don't want cold coffee unless you're like me. I like a nice coffee. Yeah, I'm one of them kind of people. You can thank my wife for that. It's her fault. I'm blaming it on her. Yeah. I pass me a Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. I'm going to stop in. I want me an iced vanilla latte with extra caramel. Brother, Bra Brother Brandon knows what I'm talking about. Look at it. He's shouting amen. He just don't want y'all to throw nothing at him. Yeah. But you, don't, you want your coffee hot. Huh? Same way God wants you to either live for Him or He'd rather you not live for Him at all. Right. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And it's either your heart or your cold. What are you saying, preacher? How, how, how can I get my foot in the door? By living by the Word of God. All of it has to apply. Well, brother, I keep the Ten Commandments. That's not all the commandments there is. Just because that's what you found in Deuteronomy... Doesn't mean that's all there in the commandments. I believe it was Pastor that said last Wednesday night. He said, wherever he says that shall, it's a commandment. Uh, well, come on, somebody. We, we got to live for God. It also said, that's why David said, I hide thy word in my heart. That, that way I'm not lukewarm. Oh, but yeah, David had his downfalls. And David said, yeah. But the Bible also says that we all fall short of the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you, as long as we say, God, I know that I've fallen, but you can help me get back up. Just because we fall doesn't mean we have to keep going down and going down. But yet, I understand that we got to understand the times that we are living in. I understand that the world we're living in is falling apart day by day, piece by piece. And it's getting worse by hand. I understand that the world's not getting into any better. That's the time. I understand that our children are dying lost. And we got lost loved ones that are dying lost. I understand that we got preachers that are giving up everything that they used to live for. And they're let down on their standards. And they backslidden and walked away from God. I understand the times that we're living in. But we got to understand that they're still babies. They're coming up in the house of God. And God is still living in revival. And God is still pouring out his spirit. Go back to Romans. We got to understand the times we're living in. We got to understand the day and hour that we're living in. We got to understand and know the times. That now is high time. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. That net the night is far spent. For the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. It's time that we understand the times. And understand now that if you're not going to live for God today, you might not make it tomorrow. Because you need to understand that the word of God simply states, we're not promised our tomorrow. We're only promised the time that we have at hand. We're only the settings that we are living in is all we have. Tomorrow may never come. 
Because we're growing, he's going to start trying to pull away. Because that's the times we're living in. You gotta understand the times. I'm pretty sure you're already done it tonight. No, we gotta understand the times we're living in. We're just, we're adults in here tonight. One of my babies in my house. I wondered why every time he came home from practice, he'd go straight to his room and he would hear him in there crying. My wife would go pick him up from practice, bring him home, he'd go straight to his room and he would hear him in there boohooing. Before I came to church, I set my baby down. And I had to explain to him, Brother Brian, why he wasn't going back to his mom and dad anytime soon. Because the times we're living in. Because no longer mamas and daddies care about their babies. I had to explain to him something. Since you've lived in my house, your mom and daddy have been arrested at least three times that I know about. And the reason why you can't go back home is because I won't quit doing drugs. And your daddy won't quit beating your mama. Never in my life have I ever raised a teenager. But Bradley, Brother Bradley, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Because when you got to explain to somebody that their mom and daddy don't care enough to even try to get you back, this is the times we're living in. These are the days we're living in, church. These are the days that the world needs a church. This is the day that a community needs a church. This community don't need just Sister Beth. She can't do it by herself. The pastor can't do it by himself. But I'm here to tell you this world needs a church as a whole. It needs a body. It needs a body without stretched arms. It needs a church with a heart.